today we're going to look at web scraping. And the reason is that internet is still the largest source of information that is dynamically changing. And there's a lot of value to be unlocked. Web scraping is nothing new. There have been packages like Beautiful Soup, which people have been using for ages. But the problem is, instead of a website like this, a traditional web scraper will see something like this, where you had to really come up with a lot of different rules to extract information. But now, thanks to open source, web scrapers like Crawl for AI, which uses LLMs to extract information, web scraping is a lot more simpler and scalable. But there is a huge limiting factor, and that is cost, which nobody is talking about. We're going to come back to that later in the video. So the goal of this video is to show you how to set up crawl for AI and then use LLMs like DeepSeek or Gemini to extract information directly from a given web page. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process of how to do that and what are the different things that you need to keep in mind if you're going to be using an LLM for web scraping. Crawl for AI is an open source package, which is probably one of the best documented, and it has a lot of different features. So we're going to be just looking at some of the basic functionality that will get you started. But let me know if you're interested in a more detailed video of looking at some of the more advanced features. Now to get started, I put together this simple uh, Python script, but let me first walk you through the setup process. So first you need to create a virtual environment. So for that use conda create name of the virtual environment and then the Python package that you want to use. I have already created a virtual environment and activated that. Now we will need to install a number of different packages including crawl for AI, OpenAI because we are going to be using light LLM proxy to use different LLMs and then the Python ENV for managing our API keys. So Light LLM is pretty great because this gives you the ability to interact with different LLMs using the same API interface. So think about this as OpenAI compatible APIs. Another option is to use Open Router, but I don't think Crawl for AI has support for that. Okay, so once you install the packages, then you are set to do the information extraction. Before going to the code, let's talk about a couple of critical things. First is, here's the website that we're going to be using for information extraction. And the goal is going to be to extract this table. Now, there are some other elements like plots, which we are not interested in. But most importantly, we need to talk about the cost associated with web scraping when you are using LLMs. I was playing around with DeepSeek, both the R1 and V3. And in total, I think I used about uh, 150,000 tokens for web scraping. And it comes out to be about 25 requests in total. Now, just interacting with that website cost me about 8 cents. And the reason is that even though we are looking at this website, in the background, a crawl for AI is going to be looking at this and then cleaning it up into a manageable markdown. But still, the number of tokens are going to increase if you're working with a lot more complex websites especially if you want to do this at scale. So let's say if you're making millions of API calls for web scraping using an LLM, this is going to add up very quickly. So keep that in mind if you are deciding to use an LLM for web scraping. But the good thing is you don't have to do that. Crawl for AI actually enables web scraping without an LLM, which is pretty neat. And it also enables markdown generation which are extremely helpful when you're processing or post-processing this data with large language model. Okay, so in the rest of the video, I'll quickly walk you through the code first. And one more thing before that, you might have to install the Playwright browser extension. So if you run into any issues, make sure to just run this command. Now for extraction of information, we're going to be using an LLM strategy. As I said, you can just use crawl for ai to directly scrape the data. And if you need, you can use an LNM to extract information on top of that. 
okay we will provide the url that we want to scrape now you can have multiple different urls or so you can provide a list of urls and then crawl for ai is going to go through each one of them now the beauty of using an llm is that you can directly generate structured outputs so for example i provided this set of instructions that you're going to be given a leaderboard page page and then we want this specific information so rank of the model model name score confidence interval how many votes were given organization and license now in this case i wanted to create a valid json format in the final output which is going to stick to this specific schema so it's great because if you are doing this the web scraping at scale you can define your own schema get information extracted within that schema and then directly put that into a database the next step is to configure your llm so for this experiment i'm using deepseek v3 so we need to provide the provider name api token i already have set that in my environment variable and you can optionally also provide the base url okay so here's the list of models that crawl for ai supports and it does support a lot more through light llm proxy but you can use a model from this list you need to just provide your api key if you're using a model from this list or a, a provider i don't think you need to provide the base url but if you're bringing in your own model through light llm i think you do need to provide the base url in that case and after that we're going to define the strategy that we want to use the main thing is that we want the model output in to be a specific schema that we already provided we want the input format to llm to be markdown so crawl for ai is going to convert that into markdown and we also want to apply chunking now you probably will have to play around with these different hyperparameters in order to get the best performance out of crawl for ai it has a lot of features which i'm not covering in this specific video but what we are doing is we are scraping and doing information ex extraction in a single step using crawl for ai so for that we're going to provide our llm instructions then we create the configurations i think you can also disable running through iframes if you want right this hyperparameter is going to just disable going through external links we configure our browser configurations and then just pass this on to crawl for ai and let it scrap the data from this web page for us this is a simple setup this is all the code that you need in order to scrape a single web page now in order to run this we're going to use python and then web scraping.py now a couple of things to keep in mind i'm using deep seek v3 in this specific case so it is going to take some time because i think it's rate limited at the moment if you want to do web scraping at scale you probably want to use a much faster model either something that is hosted through grok or i'll show you how to replace this with a gemini flash model which is going to be a lot more quicker this took a long time about 93 seconds i think we can definitely reduce this if we use another model now let's look at the information that it extracted so it extracted the rank model name scores a confidence interval votes and organization license right everything seems to be fine but for some reason i think it did not extract the actual model name that is listed on the website rather it simply listed interestingly enough just like google or deep seek which is pretty interesting but it's always good to validate what exactly it's saying so if we look at some of these scores i think they look fine to me so let's actually randomly pick this number six which is 1256 and then 5278 words that is the open ai model 1256 that's the score and 5278 words right so the information seems to be correct apart from the model name but since we're using an llm we can actually control this i updated my system prompt for the model name extract the complete name for example this instead of just anthropic right when i ran that again now we are actually uh, seeing the full name of the models 
which is pretty neat, right? And that's the beauty of using an LLM because you have a lot more control on the output. And especially, it can actually look at the data that is available and make a logical deductions rather than simply following regular expression-based rules as was the case in the previous generation of web scrapers. Next, I'm going to show you how you can replace this with other models like Gemini, for example. So in that case, we need to change the model provider name to Gemini. I'm going to go to AI Studio. Now, for web scraping at scale, you don't want to use something like 2.5 Pro because that is going to be extremely costly. So I'm going to use the Gemini Flash model and we'll just use this. We're going to replace the model name with this one. I've already stored my API key for Gemini. Now, in this case, we don't need to actually provide the base URL, so I'm going to just comment this and that out. One more thing is you need to make sure that you look at your prompt. The prompt is going to change based on the model that you're using. So let's see if using the same prompt, Flash can provide us information in this format or not. I think I already stored that. We're going to just run this and let's wait for the output. We're going to also see how long it takes to actually process our request. This is the output from Gemini 2.5 Flash. Interestingly enough, it's going to the previous behavior. So instead of the full name of the model, it's only extracting Anthropic number one, Google number one. It took about 60 seconds. So even though we have provided explicit instructions to extract the name of the model as listed here, for some reason, it's just going back and doing stuff like V3 before that instruction. So that's why you need to be careful. Unfortunately, you can't just take a system prompt from one model to another model and hope that it's going to work. And I have seen this uh, in a lot of different cases. Even the same system prompt for different models from the same provider does not work, especially if you're working with, let's say, GPT 4.1 and O3, you need to prompt them in very different ways. A few things to remember from this quick experiment. First, if you're doing these things at scale, make sure that you consider the cost associated with the data extraction process. Second is you actually want to look at the data that it generates. Let me know if you're interested in more detailed walkthrough of Crawlfrey AI. I am going to create a few follow-up videos if there is interest. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are interested in technical content. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.